Friends, welcome to Barnatiemen. Well, it's winter here at Westerheim Museum, and it's awfully cold, and there's snow on the ground. So today, I thought that I would share a few things about winter or winter. And one of the main things as I already said about winter is snow. And the Norwegian word for snow is snø. Looks very much like uh, like snow, and snow is just a large accumulation or a big bunch of snow flakes or snufnug. That's an interesting word, isn't it? Snufnug. <laughs> so today I'm going to share some snufnug or some snowflakes that we have in the collection with you. So I'm going to put on some gloves because I want to protect the objects in the museum's collection from any dirt or oil that's on my hands. And then I can show you some of the snowflakes that we have collected at Westerheim Museum. First, I have this beautiful brooch or pin. And then maybe you can imagine this uh, hanging from your neckline or the top of your shirt. And this would decorate that, that part of your, of your clothing. On this beautiful pin, there are a couple of snowflakes. It kind of moves around a little bit here, so let me show you those. Here's a snowflake right in the center that has a red dot or a red stone in the center. And there's one here as well. So two snowflakes are hiding or are located on this beautiful pin. Now, it wasn't really easy to see the shape of the snowflakes, uh, maybe on this pin. So let me show you some snowflakes that are a little bit bigger. So here are some snowflake shapes and a snowflake shape here. And maybe you can see those a little bit easier. Now, not all of the patterns here are quite like snowflakes in that some of them have more arms than snowflakes have. If you've ever looked at a snowflake under a microscope, or maybe uh, you've, uh, you've looked at it really, really, uh, really close with some kind of magnification so that you could see it bigger, um, you would see that snowflakes have six arms, six arms. And some of these pieces look like they have eight arms. So they're kind of more maybe fantasy or make-believe snowflakes, but they still look, look like uh, that in terms of the shape. But this one here um, uh, has some, uh, some arms that maybe look like a snowflake, and this one here too. And this is a hat, a cap that you would wear on your head. It has these interesting snowflake patterns on them. This Maybe you can see has some snowflake-like patterns on it. This is a this is a breastplate, and this fits into a Norwegian woman's bunad or festive costume. And you can see the different snowflake-like patterns that decorate this piece. And these snowflakes aren't made out of snow, though. They're made out of beads. So think about the different ways you could, or different materials, different things you could make snowflakes out of. Well, snowflakes are unique. Each one is different. And there are lots of snowflake or snowflake-like patterns in the museum's collection, and they're on many different things. And so they are unique as well. And I want to show you those in a couple of the warmer clothing, the winter clothing that we have. These are some gloves, and you can see that they have large snowflake patterns or snowflake-like patterns on them. And here's another glove. Let me hold these up together so you can see the difference. This has a snowflake-like pattern on it, just like this, but they are very different. They are unique. And I have one more to show you. These are some, some mittens, and they have some different snowflake 
or snowflake-like patterns on them, not only on the tops of the hands, so here, but look at the thumbs. The thumbs have something unique on, on them that is different from what you see on the front side or the top side of the mittens. So snowflakes, six sides, and they are unique. Each one is very, very different. Well, I want to show you how to make your own unique or, and very, very different snowflakes using some fun materials. So let me get those gathered up for you and I'll show you how you can make your own snowflakes. Okay, time to make our uh, snowflakes. And we're gonna make these today out of two things that you hopefully or might actually have at home. And one thing is marshmallows. If you like hot chocolate like I do, I always have plenty of marshmallows at home. Or some cotton balls. And you might have those in your, um, in your bathroom or in a cupboard somewhere, whether they, uh, they might even be in your art supplies. So hopefully these are all uh, materials or the things that we're going to use today are all things that you have at home. There are some instructions available. Uh, that go along with this program and you can uh, download those. It's just a PDF and you can follow along and uh, get a list of the materials and then create these snowflakes yourself. Well, I'm going to show you the materials that, uh, that I'm going to use and then we'll practice in making a little bit of these and then I can show you some of the examples that I've already made. So you're going to need a sheet of Grab some blue um, construction paper. And if you don't have blue, that's okay. Any other color will work well, except for white. White's not gonna show up really well because of the cotton balls or the marshmallows. So some blue construction paper um, is what I've, what I've been using. Um, you're going to need either some cotton balls, kind of some big, big ones, and, or, I mean, you could mix these up if you wanted to. Some marshmallows. Now you could use big marshmallows like these, or you can use these little mini ones like this. So, you know, whatever you have or whatever you like, that will work for this project. Now, you will also need some glue. And I've found that the um, glue sticks don't always work the best for this particular project. So I'm recommending that you have some um, school glue or some white craft glue like this that's liquid and that will help uh, this project along much better than the glue sticks. Now, sometimes it's a little bit tough to draw the um, snowflakes on the paper with the glue, and so I have found it really useful to have a little cup and a paintbrush, and I put the glue inside here, and then I can just paint my snowflakes right onto the paper. Well, I'm not going to do a really big project for you today. I just want to show you how, um, how this all works. So I'm just going to take a really small piece of paper. And I'm going to take my glue. I'm not going to fill up my, my cup today, but shake this a little bit. And I'm going to make a, a pattern, a snowflake pattern that I like on this paper here. So let's squeeze this out here. Takes a little bit to get going. You can kind of see here just how much glue I've used, and maybe you don't want to use that much glue. That's why the um, paintbrush is really super helpful for this. And let's see, I said that snowflakes have six sides, so you can, you can make a snowflake pattern with six um, sides if you want, or however many sides you, you would like. So I've got a line or some lines drawn to make the snowflake. Okay, I could use cotton balls, but I'm actually going to use uh, my um, marshmallows. Take off, um, take off my gloves here to do to do this part. Because guess what? I'd actually want to eat one of these, and it's okay. You can eat the marshmallows. Do not eat the cotton balls, um, and don't eat the marshmallows after you've put glue on them either. Yuck! That's not. That's not good. So I'm gonna start just placing marshmallows. And you know what, I might actually use a big marshmallow maybe in the center. And I just keep placing my marshmallows until I have the lines filled up. And I can always add more glue uh, wherever I need to. 
So don't feel limited by the lines that you've already drawn. So let me just finish this up quickly here as I can. I'm just placing a few so that you can get an idea of how this, this works. So it's pretty easy to do this. And there we go. There's a little bit of start of my, uh, my snowflake. And like I said, I could, have, I could have used some cotton balls to do that. That works, that works well too. Now you may want to uh, make your snowflakes a little bit more sparkly, kind of like sometimes when you go outside and you see snow and it sparkles. So if you want to make your snowflakes sparkle, then you're gonna need some glitter. And a couple of things about glitter, um, sometimes it can be a little bit messy. So maybe you want to put your paper or that you're working on inside of a tray or a baking sheet, and that way you can contain um, all of the glitter. And glitter comes in different, different forms. So if you want to make it super easy, you can get some glitter glue like this, which I used on one of my projects that I'm going to show you. Or you can just get some um, containers of, of glitter, loose glitter like this. And because it tends to make a little bit of a mess, I'm not going to actually put it, <laughs> put it on the paper for you today. But I would just put some glue here and then sprinkle this on. So let me show you a couple of the artworks that I created. Um, and like I said, the snowflakes are unique and you are unique, so you can make these however you'd like. So here is my cotton ball snowflake. It's got lots of sort of arms around and I use some of the glitter glue on the sides to create some decoration. Here is a start of an artwork with marshmallows and you can see that I have not only used marshmallows, different sized uh, marshmallows, but also glitter on, on this one here. So I've got a couple of different or three different uh, snowflakes here. They have, some have uh, multiple arms, uh, not, uh, not all of them have six uh, arms and I've got glitter. So I put some glitter on the side and I also used glue. I just put glue right on top of the marshmallows and I put glitter on there. So there's lots of ways that you can make these, these snowflakes. And I hope that you enjoy making one and then hanging it up in, in your house or maybe you want to give it as a gift to someone special. All right, this month I have another activity for you to do, and this is a snowball launcher. And not real snowballs, because you probably shouldn't launch or throw snowballs inside of your house. But maybe it's too cold outside, or maybe you don't live a play in a place where there is snow or even a lot of, of snow to be able to uh, play with snowballs. So I thought this would be a fun way for you to experience that. So you need a few things, and there are some instructions that you can download with this program, and it's called Snowball Launcher, and it's for indoor fun, again. There's not too many materials, but um, you can also improvise on, on these things. So I like to use these sort of small plastic cups that you can get. They're about nine ounce cups. These seem to work quite well for uh, creating the little launcher. I also um, have some balloons that you'll need. And this is, the, this is the part that you might not have at home, but I think you can improvise either with a sort of scrunched up ball of paper. But I have some giant uh, puff balls here, and these are often in craft supplies. So they're like a giant pom-pom. I also have some very large styrofoam balls, also things that uh, you can find in craft sections at stores, or maybe you have these in, in your supplies. And the, the idea though is that I need something that is going to fit inside the cup, but still sort of roll around and there's enough room for it to get back out of the cup. So that should give you some measure. You're also gonna need some uh, scissors to cut the cup and the balloon and sometimes the cup is a little bit strong, and so I would really recommend that adults help with this particular part of the project. So taking scissors, um, you can kind of jab it into the bottom of the cup here, and then you're just going to cut out that bottom part of the cup, because you need that to be open. So maybe you can see my fingers are, are, point, are poking through that. So I've cut that out 
uh, that bottom part of the cup out here. All right, so that is cut. I've taken a balloon and I've just I've cut the the end off of it, like the part that would be rounded when you blow it up. I just made a snip uh, in that. Now you might want to not make a huge snip, so maybe like just you know from the top down, maybe just this little bit. And you can always increase that, but you know you can't add on to to the balloon again. You can get an adult to to help you tie. The, the end, just like if you, if this were a balloon that were blown up, this would be the tied end. So we've cut the end that doesn't get the tie, and we're going to tie the end that normally does. But there's no air in it, of course, because it's wide open. Then you might need an adult to help you with this as well, because this is a little bit tricky. Um, and so you want to put, kind of put the, um, take the cup and you want to put the balloon over this end. I'm going to do that here on the table and just give you sort of a sense of how that works. And it's going to end up looking something, something like this, okay? And then this is what you're going to pull back and to shoot the ball in. So you put the ball in, hold on to this, and you'll kind of put this up and whew, it'll pop out. <laughs> Now you can um, you can change the uh, the amount that the ball flies or whatever you're using inside here by put it tip how you tip the cup. Now don't tip it up towards your face, not a good idea, or somebody else's face. But um, you can tip it down a little bit. You can tip it up, and how much you pull on on this balloon will also determine or decide how far your uh, ball or your projectile here is going to go. So just a fun, kind of a fun activity in a way that you can enjoy some winter fun indoors if you don't happen to have any snow.